Well, it's finally here, Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I felt like it was never going to happen, and then suddenly, Apple just dropped it on us. Personally, I wonder a little bit about that. I'll circle back later. This video is about my first impressions as a complete novice user of Final Cut Pro anywhere, not just on the iPad. I'm not going to walk through the interface and how to use it. There's already lots of videos about that. No, I'm going to talk about my perspective as a LumaFusion user thinking about Final Cut Pro for iPad and whether I should use it instead. What's better? What's worse? What are the features that I love? And what's missing in each application? I'm Saab Johal. Let's get into it. My history is as a LumaFusion creator. I've got no experience on Final Cut Pro desktop and a teensy little bit of Premiere Pro, but that was years ago. Final Cut Pro for iPad is okay to learn, but in my view, more fiddly than LumaFusion with more switches and modes to learn. I was actually quite surprised. I thought it would be more intuitive messing with trackpad, pencil, my fingers, and also drop down menus a lot of the time. I mean, I'm sure I'd get used to it, but like I say, it surprised me. So what's missing? Technically, I'm sure it's a powerful product or will develop into one. It's only been out for two days at the time of my recording, but then there are some things that are underdone too, like external disc editing, which is not possible. And I'm super surprised at that. In fact, I would describe myself as shocked. I like to keep everything organized and backed up to external drives once I've made the video or even editing directly from that. At the moment, it looks like you have to import files directly into your iPad to get them into a project. And for me, that would get to be a problem really fast on a 256 gigabyte iPad Pro M1 which I use for a number of projects, not just video editing. I'm sure Apple will get around to enabling this, but for now, this is a big oversight for me. So what else is missing? That's making me think twice about switching from LumaFusion. Well, I couldn't find the option specifically to record voiceover. Not with the little countdown and specific positioning on the timeline and the opportunity to re-record like LumaFusion does. I imagine something will come, but you have to work around for that right now. I also have third-party transitions and LUTs in LumaFusion. They may be coming in Final Cut Pro for iPad, but there's not much there yet, apart from some standard LUTs from the major camera brands. And I suspect anything else will cost more too. The reason why I mention LUTs is that overall color management options are pretty limited in Final Cut Pro for iPad right now. I mean, I don't use them much, but many do. And this was a surprise to me. There's also no option for stabilization that I could find in Final Cut Pro for iPad. Now that might not be an everyday tool for most, but I do use it occasionally and I definitely missed it when I was snooping around the app and I'd miss it in some edits too. I imagine this will come as a third party offering, but like I say, you may be paying extra and how that's gonna work within a subscription model is yet to be revealed. Okay, so what's the cool stuff? Let me start with my two favorite new features and move on to cover some of the others. Final Cut Pro for iPad comes with the ability to edit cinematic video taken from iPhone 13s and 14s within the application. So long as you airdrop a file over from your iPhone to your iPad, selecting the option to include the photo data, you can edit the focus of the video subject and how it switches and tracks across the clip within the Final Cut Pro for iPad without having to do it in photos first. Now this is cool. I mean, cinematic video in the iPhone can be a little bit janky in that kind of subject and background separation. So you're working within those limits, but it's certainly a cool feature I can see myself using. The feature you may have seen most people talking about is here too live writing using your Apple Pencil too. You can write on the screen of the section of video you want to illustrate and it records the pencil strokes and adds it as a separate animated layer on top of your clip. It's that simple. It just works. I love live writing, but I suspect that it's going to be everywhere very quickly. There's a potential to get a little bit jaded by it before too long with other gimmicks that we've seen in the past. But there are going to be some really creative uses which are going to be great and I'll be fascinated to see how it's used. I'd also love to see it added in LumaFusion too. Auto scene masking is another feature that's getting a lot of attention right now. 
This offers the ability to instantly isolate a subject and remove it from its background with just a tap without using a green screen or rotoscoping. And you can use it for getting cool effects like words between the background and the subject on screen. But scene masking will only work under the most optimal conditions. This is kind of what I got when I tried it. It's an all or nothing kind of deal too. You just kind of drop that feature onto your timeline and it either is going to work or not. So it's more hit than miss right now. They may improve that or maybe that's just the limits of what's possible right now. If you can get it right, it will save you so much time or a few possibilities you've never thought of before, if you can get it right. There appears to be an auto music option too. You might be familiar with something similar if you've used the Insta360 app to edit some of your short form or social videos. And this is fine and it's kind of cool until you realize that there are only 40 tracks included in Final Cut Pro for iPad. And like the social videos for the Insta360 app, that gets tired really quickly. I wonder if they're going to bring the ability to import your own music to achieve the same effect. Now that would be cool. There's also auto crop where the app intelligently adjusts footage for vertical square and other aspect ratios while keeping your subject front and center so you can deliver your videos to multiple platforms easily. That's also pretty cool. And another on the list for LumaFusion, right? What's a don't know for me right now? I haven't had the cause to use multicam too much on LumaFusion right now, but I can't say I love the experience of editing a multicam clip on that app. I haven't tried it on Final Cut Pro for iPad yet, and I'm not sure I will use it much. If it was easy, I probably would use it, so I'm aiming to give that a try at some point in my free months subscription. So what do I think overall? For me, the jury's still out on this one. I can see pros and cons for both LumaFusion and Final Cut Pro for iPad, but surprisingly, my initial gut is that I still prefer LumaFusion, but I've got my eye on the increasing potential of Final Cut Pro for iPad. I have a month free and I'll explore during that time. I was actually going to make this video using a straight edit using Final Cut Pro for iPad, but it felt actually too fiddly and would take too much time to figure out how to do simple stuff. So I reached for LumaFusion instead. That probably tells you something, but there's still lots to explore. At the moment, Final Cut Pro for iPad is good, but perhaps leaning too hard on a couple of key and somewhat gimmicky features. If you already have LumaFusion, you've got nothing to lose by trying Final Cut Pro for iPad for a month. It's free for that time. If you're just starting out, Apple's app might actually be an easier learning curve if you're starting from scratch, but who knows? It's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. And I've got some more testing to do too. It feels like Apple did drop Final Cut Pro for iPad out there without much warning. And to me, the whole app has the feel of let's get it out there kind of a release, especially with the lack of fanfare and the fact that it came out before WWDC. It does make me wonder whether they needed to hit a deadline before they got overtaken by other things that are gonna be coming up that people are gonna be talking about. If that's true, I expect that the updates and features and workflow will be coming thick and fast pretty soon. And I guess that might be the advantage of what is actually a low cost subscription, but coming from a massive company. What we may see is updates coming through pretty quickly. I know LumaFusion is a small company and they do their best but it did feel a long time between updates and trailed feature releases, some of which never seemed to materialize. Speed ramping anyone? And when LumaFusion updates did drop, some of those were free and some of those were paid. So that one-off purchase for LumaFusion, in my experience, wasn't really one-off at all. Yes, I've paid less than a subscription for those years if I say 
add up everything that I've spent on the initial purchase and features and unlocking certain aspects of the app since then. But I do wonder if a low cost subscription model from a big company with speedier upgrades and new features dropping might actually be worth it in the long run. I hope you've enjoyed my view on this. Drop a like, subscribe, even a little tip would be nice. It must be years since I got one of those. This is the Saab Johal, except no substitutes. Thanks for watching. Maybe try one of these next and see you again here soon.